For the last two years, we have stared at the falling away that had been prophesied. We have watched church after church close, thousands of churches around this country closing. Uh, there's more churches closing now uh, versus the number of churches being opened. Uh, there's a bigger decline than, than any time in the last two centuries. Uh, and, and we're seeing it become, it's going faster and faster and the pace is picking up much quicker. And media outlets are reporting on this all over the country because it's just a strange phenomenon that really is leaving a lot of people scratching their heads wondering why. Well, let's first take a look at who is leaving the church. I, I believe you really have kind of four categories of people in the church. Uh, you have the young. They're leaving the church. They're leaving the church in the biggest numbers uh, for a couple reasons. Either they're, which is the biggest reason, is they think you're all a bunch of hypocrites. Uh, you know, they're, they're not dumb. Kids are very smart. You know, one thing I learned about being a high school teacher, you can't fool a kid. You can fool, you can fool an adult way before you can fool a kid. Kids will see right through you. And they're not dumb. And they see right through you. Uh, so they have chosen to leave the church, either because they don't see what it is you're preaching in the church, or... <clears throat> They just have totally abandoned the faith altogether. Uh, the other is non-Christians. Of course, a lot of non-Christians, whenever they see that, um, you know, that maybe they have an excuse to get out of church, they're going to take it. Uh, they're, those people that are in church as non-Christians is a vast majority of the people in church because they are the ones who are there because it's kind of what you do in your community. It's, you know, it's where everybody is on Sunday. It's your mom told you to or whatever it is. You just go because it's just what you do. It's part of the culture. Um, and then you have confused Christians. And this is probably what you see mostly in the churches today. What's remaining is they're just confused. Um, they're wondering why. They're really Christians, but they're wondering why everybody's leaving. And they're wondering why all this is happening. Um, but the reality is, is they've just been sheep, they're sheep that have been led astray and they, they're, they're, they've, been, they've been falsely taught. Uh, they've been taught that all you got to do is show up into a building and say some amens and throw through bu uh, bucks in the plate. And that's, that's it. That's literally all you got to do. And then the fourth kind you have is the remnant, which is the Christians who have said, this is wrong. What you're like, this is not what the Bible says we are to be doing as the church, not a building the church, but as the body of Christ, the church, that we don't see what it is that the Bible says you're to do in you. So why would we go and do that thing? Because we want to be about our father's business. And you know, the sad thing about this is there's many communities where they maybe had one church in town that, that you know, kind of held the community get it together and it's, they're, they're closing. They're closing. Now, there's many towns around this country that have no churches open in them right now and many more closing as we speak. So, biblically speaking, well, what's going on here? Well, you know, because, you know, I don't believe in the end it was really necessarily people that caused it. I think it was a lot of deceitful spirits. And it was prophesied that this would happen. Jesus himself, when he was talking to the disciples about the end times, said this in Matthew 24, 10. And then many will be offended, will betray one another, and will hate one another. Now, I'm going to pull that apart. I'm reading the New King James Version here uh, because that's not what that says. Um, this word will be offended. What it really says is that word is scandalous thesante, which is to entrap, trip up, entice apostasy, sin, or displeasure. In other words, and he's talking about the church here, so he's saying that, that in the latter times, many will entrap, trip up, entice the, the, the church into apostasy, sin, and displeasure. And that, then that's what you're seeing taking place right now. And if you keep going, it says, Then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. And because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. This is why this is happening. It's not that complicated. 
Uh, there are deceiving spirits. Um, I believe many pastors around this country are possessed by demons and they are and deceiving spirits. And they're leading people down a path and they've led other pastors who aren't possessed, you know, people that really want to do God's work. They've been taught that this is what you do. You just do this thing. You repeat. You repeat this thing that is not biblical at all. You just keep repeating it because we've learned this centuries ago from the Romans that you build a big cathedral, you have everybody gather on Sunday, and that's it. It's all you got to do. But they're enticing them, entrapping, tripping up, or enticing the Christian faith into apostasy, sin, and displeasure. And that is why they were leaving the church. Because if you look at 1 Timothy 4.1, it says, Now the Spirit expressly says that in the latter times some will depart from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their own conscience seared with a hot iron. Now I want to break that sentence. Let's break that one apart where it says some will depart that word, um, is apostasante, which is to abandon, to remove or revolt. And that word from the, that's not there at all. That it just So it essentially says that in the latter times, some will abandon, remove, or revolt the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. You know, so what they're doing is they're essentially, they're revolting, abandoning, and removing the faith, what it is as disciples we are to do, speaking lies and, you know, and giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. You know, it's not complicated why this is happening. It is, it's happening. It was prophesied that it was going to happen, and now we're watching it happen. Uh, you know, and, and I, I just kind of want to speak to the confused Christians for a moment. Um, you know, because I, I believe we're all kind of, if, if you've really been, if the blood of Jesus Christ is a real thing in your relationship with him, if you've accepted that gift and the spirit dwells within you, you're probably wondering what's going on. And none of this makes sense. You're trying to do the right thing, but you're not really sure what it is the right thing is. Well, if you look at Hebrews 6, starting verse 4. For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted the heavenly gift and have become partakers of the Holy Spirit and have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the age to come, if they fall away, to renew them again to repentance, since they crucify again for themselves the Son of God and put him to an open shame. I don't think any of us should be surprised by what we're seeing. Um, and if you are a real Christian, just repent. And, you know, you might say, well, but I've been trying. Like, well, why repent? Uh, well, have you been feeding the hungry, clothing the naked, taking care of the widows, the orphans, visiting the prisoners and the sick? In other words, have you been about your father's business? If he is your heavenly father and you're not being about his business, you need to repent. Um, and and, and this, if the spirit dwells within, it's going to be poking at you to do those things. If it's, if there's, I'm not saying you desire to do those things. You know, most people don't want to do those things, which is why, which is why it's such an awesome gift to desire to do those things, which is what the spirit should be doing. It should be poking at you, pushing you, almost shoving you towards those things. If you don't feel any of that, I think you got to really just kind of question your relationship and pray for that spirit. So there you go. Why is it happening? That's why. Um, you know, young people, confused Christians, repent. It's this that that building that's not what the church is. This this body, you, me, all of us, we are the church. Love to hear any thoughts on that. Put in the comments below. If you like this video, click like and subscribe. Feel called to support this channel with Patreon. That link is also below. But the most important part of this channel is we take prayer requests. So please don't ever hesitate to send that in. Thank you for watching this episode of God, Family, and Guns. And as always, love God, love your family, and love guns.